What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and I know I haven't made a video in quite a while It's been about a week or so, but we're getting right back at it We're gonna be doing the draft grades for the 2018 draft. I'm gonna go by divisions I thought that would be easier for me instead of just going by teams because then if I go by divisions I have to talk about four teams at once and it kind of limit myself in talking so you know I don't have you know a lot of people can do that make 32 videos on you know 32 videos 10 minutes long or 20 minutes long whatever but I just don't have the time to do that and by the time I finish doing draft grades will already be by next season so uh, right before we start this make sure you guys like the video subscribe if you guys are new follow my gaming channel link is in the description below also follow me on twitch uh, I'm not really much on Twitter, but make make sure you follow me on Twitter. I guess just just do it, just just do it, man. Because um, if I get a lot of followers on Twitter, Twitter, maybe I'll start using it. Uh, because sometimes I tweet stuff and just not nobody responds. So sad face. Anyway, um, we're gonna be going right into it. The draft grades for the NFC East we are starting with. So you guys already know about the Giants draft grades and you know how I thought about what I thought about the Giants because obviously I'm a Giants fan so I'll leave the card right up above if you guys haven't watched that video if you guys are interested in watching that video you guys can watch that video right now so I'm not going to talk too much about the Giants in this video I'm going to more focus on the Cowboys the Redskins and the Eagles so just a quick run through on the Giants I thought it was a great draft probably one of the best Giants draft drafts in history of course I wasn't alive for for much long only 20 years but uh, so far in my lifespan uh, I've seen this is the best draft I've ever seen from the Giants we hit every need on the on the head except corner and wide receiver but we only had uh, so many picks to work with so um, I like that we double dipped at defensive tackle so you know uh, do I wish we could have went corner instead of double dipping on defensive tackle? Absolutely. I, I feel like we should have went corner. But like I said, I don't think there were much cor good corners available in the fifth round for us to grab. Maybe there was one. I don't know. I haven't done research on every single prospect in this in the draft. But, um, you know, I just didn't see any guys I was very familiar with. So I was assuming that they weren't very good. So it's a name game, really. But uh, like I said in my previous video about the whole draft thing it, it was a great draft i give it an a it was phenomenal the only reason why it wasn't a plus like i said i really wish we would have gotten a wide receiver or a cornerback in this draft we just need depth in those positions bad uh but like i said in my undrafted free agents video we have a cornerback that could be our slot corner for the future so um go ahead and watch my video on that as well so we're gonna move on to the nitty gritty we're gonna go move on to a, to teams that i'm not fans of and I quite frankly I don't like but honestly to be very honest I think these were very decent drafts from the NFC East team we've seen a lot worse especially in this draft I really didn't like the Kansas City draft uh, that was terrible a couple other guys a couple other teams I didn't really didn't like but the NFC East I think had productive drafts and I definitely don't take anything away from them I just think the Giants just had a better draft than, uh, than the NFC, in the NFC East but Let's go on with the, let's start, I'm just, this is the no particular order whatsoever, I'm just going by what I written down. So, we're going to start off with the Eagles, they traded away their 32nd overall pick to the Baltimore Ravens who got Lamar Jackson. So we're going to start off, and I don't, I'm not familiar with all the trades that happened, like, I'm just going to name the pick, overall pick, and then the player, then give my thoughts on the player and the grade, so... Moving on, the Eagles, they draft in the second round with the 49th overall pick. They draft Dallas Goddard, tight end out of South Dakota. And it's funny because, you know, they drafted a guy named Dallas. They jumped ahead. I believe they traded up for Dallas, and they jumped ahead of the Dallas Cowboys to grab him. And tight end is a need for the Dallas Cowboys. So it was just kind of funny to see. I think, I think they jumped ahead of the Cowboys. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it was just kind of funny to see anyway. Um, what I like about this guy, he's a big go-get-it type tight end. I mean, he's a receiving tight end, obviously. I don't think he does much in the blocking game and run blocking, uh, which I think the the, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles need. 
But um, you know, as far as as far as receiving, you know, crazy catches, Dallas Goddard is the guy. Definitely a good backup tight end to complement Zach Ertz. The Philadelphia Eagles are one of those teams that don't have so much needs that they need to particular particularly draft, you know, a certain position in with their first pick. In this case, being the 49th overall pick, but they could have went anywhere here. They could have went wide receiver, cornerback, offensive offensive line, um, you know, any kind of depth really. Um, like I said, like safety, if they really wanted to go safety. But in this case, they went tight end. I think it was a good pick. I'd give it an A. Uh, he was definitely the best tight end on the board still. So uh, moving on, their next pick is way down the list in the fourth round, 126th overall. It's a Vontae Maddox cornerback out of Pittsburgh. He's a smaller guy, but this guy was rated as one of the best slot corners in the draft, and the the uh, Philadelphia Eagles need a slot corner. They got Sidney Jones coming back. He, you know, Like I said, I graded him out last year as a, as a really good slot corner, but maybe he could play outside as well. He played outside in Washington as well, but um, and then I forgot who else they have there. They got Jalen Mills, and who else they got there at cornerback? Um, I, I'm missing somebody's name, but anyway, you know, it's not looking too bad right now for the Philadelphia Eagles and then uh, for, for the cornerback spot. So they draft this guy, Avante Maddox. He's hopefully going to be their, their slot corner. And to me, I think it's a really good option. Really good draft pick in the fourth round to grab yourself a slot corner. You didn't have to go too high in this draft to get yourself, uh, you know, someone that you need, a position that you need, which is cornerback. And, you know, you got yourself a slot corner. Congratulations. That's, that was an A-plus pick in my opinion. So uh, moving on from there, the the Philadelphia Eagles draft uh, Josh Sweat, defensive end out of FSU. This guy was rated to be a uh, second to third round pick. So good job with the Philadelphia Eagles getting him in the fourth round. I rated it a B minus just because it's not a huge need. You know, they're really stacked on the defensive line. I mean, you got you got your guy in Michael Bennett. Who knows if he's going to play a snap as an Eagle because of all the situations that he's going through right now. You got your first round pick last year in Derek Barnett. You got, I believe, Chris Long is still on your team. Um, so who else is still on your team? You got a bunch of pass. You got a bunch of pass rushers on that team still. So um, Nigel, um, Nigel Bradham, on uh, this guy, Brennan Graham. Um, so anyway, you got a bunch of pass rushers on that team, just a bunch. And I, I don't know. I think it was a kind of a wasted pick to get Josh Sweat. I don't think it was necessarily. What you should have done uh, if you wanted to get another pass rusher you could have went in like you know fifth and sixth round and down i think fourth round is starting to hit the borderline between starter and backup um so you could have gotten somebody more productive in the fourth round maybe get yourself another safety or whatever you wanted to do um but i don't know i it was a good pick just because of the value josh sweat was valued at like a second and third round pick the fact that you got him in the fourth round is good the, do you really need him i guess they're trying to prepare for anything what happened to michael bennett but you still have Derek barnett so and you still have uh brandon graham so it, it's it's complicated but i i think it was a good pick it was a good pick i give it a b minus uh, next up matt Pryor. Offensive tackle out of TCU. I gave it a B. Uh, this guy was projected to be a guard or a tackle. I heard, I heard he has like short arms or whatever, so he's more projected to be a, a guard. And I like this. The the Philadelphia Eagles do need to you know start preparing for them for the future in the offensive line. Jason Peters is getting older. You know you have Big V, um, who is a swing tackle, one of the better swing tackles in the league, and you know he can come up and play left tackle. Should. Uh, should uh, Jason Peters go down and it's not bad uh, not a bad option to in the sixth round to get yourself another offensive lineman just in case you know Jason Peters goes down big V is in there and then you need some competition there at offensive line and so uh, I don't think that was a bad option whatsoever moving on we have in the seventh round this was very um, interesting how the Philadelphia Eagles actually traded up to this pick they went from 250 to 235 to get Jordan Mailata, who is a rugby player. Offense, he's transitioning to an offensive lineman role. I assume it's going to be a tackle position. He's huge, 6'8", 246. Um, and he's a big guy, very athletic, good footwork. Obviously, just being in the rugby league, you have to have power in your feet. And you know you got to have be quick on your feet and stuff like that. 
The question is, they double dipped on offensive linemen here. They traded up to go get an, a rugby player who has not played a snap in the NFL or college or football whatsoever. I uh, heard he had a good pro day, but that's pretty much it. I don't know. Th this was kind of a weird pick for me. I gave it a C. I don't think this guy's going to pan out. We've seen rugby players come into the NFL before. That guy from the 49ers, everybody was saying, oh, maybe he's the running back for the future of the 49ers, or maybe somewhere close to that, that he could be something good in the NFL. And I don't know, people were just drinking the, drinking the Kool-Aid on him, and obviously that didn't work, work out. He went right back into the rugby league, and I feel like this would be the same thing for this guy. Um, I just don't think, you know, you double dip you double dip uh, at offensive line at the end of your draft. I guess it's you got you don't have much to lose. Yes, but you still need depth in some positions. You can still draft some competition for your positions. Um, so to me, this was a really weird pick, really unusual pick. I guess the Philadelphia Eagles were just trying to be different, like a lot of teams try to be in these drafts, like the Vikings drafting this this wide receiver out of Germany or whatever, like whatever it is in the fifth round or something like that. That guy never worked out. I mean, th these foreign players just never work out, really. So I don't know why they do these things, but they do. I gave it a C. And overall, I'm going to give the Philadelphia Eagles a B plus on their draft. It wasn't flashy. It wasn't anything spectacular, but it's things to make your team better. It's adding depth. It's doing what you have to do to keep your team uh, at a success. So um, I like what the Eagles did. And really, I don't think they could have gotten any any much better than what they did here. Like I said, the defensive end, uh, you know, drafting Josh Sweat, uh, Sweat, I think that was a little little uh, unnecessary but like I said it works out it should work out in that rotation that the Eagles have moving on to the Dallas Cowboys they had a bunch of picks we'll go on through the list and I'm just going to talk about them briefly we have Leighton Vander Esch a linebacker out of Boise State who should be um, you know obviously they're trying to get get uh, prepared for the eventual retirement of Sean Lee the great linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys who winds up hurt every year only played six uh, full 16 games once in his career. Who knows if it's going to happen again. But Leighton Van Der Esch, a lot of people were comparing him to Sean Lee. He's a tackle machine. He's decent in coverage. He's white. <laughs> so, I mean, he's, he's he's a pretty good guy. I'm, I'm a Boise State fan, so I've been watching Leighton Van Der Esch quite a lot. Do I think he was a first-round talent, locked first-round talent? No, I think he was a solid second-round pick. I think the Cowboys uh, definitely reached for him. They definitely needed to go some kind of pass rusher here. I would have liked, I mean, Le Harold Landry would have been a good pick here, but Harold Landry also fell in this draft, so I guess it was a good pick for Leighton Van Der Esch because a lot of people were getting high on him towards the late of the uh, late first round. Um, I, I would have liked Harold Landry there. Go cornerback. There was a lot of cornerbacks to choose from. Mike Hughes is a guy uh, to look at. Uh, safety, if you want to reach on a safety, like the, the Steelers did. But, um, you know, I, I think v Van Der Esch was a good pick. They're obviously um, preparing for Sean, Leaves, uh, Sean Lee's retirement because they already got the guy Jalen Smith out of Notre Dame uh, two years ago. So, you, know, you got him there. So, I think his name is Jalen Smith, right? Something like that who is a up-and-coming linebacker who's coming off an injury and stuff like that. So, um, you know, like I said, it wasn't a good pick for me. I gave it a C. It, it, it does give you, uh, it does fulfill a need, but I don't think it was necessary there. So moving on, they draft uh, with the second second round pick, 50th overall, the Dallas Cowboys select Connor Williams, offensive guard or tackle out of Texas. I gave it a B-. minus. I think he was probably the best uh, player available that fits your need. I think it was a very good pick. The question is, you know, he's having knee problems. I think that that was a guy with knee problems. And then, uh, where are you going to put him? Tackle, guard? Are you going to put Lyle T uh, Collins back at guard where he was successful? Are you going to keep experimenting him with at, at uh, offensive tackle? Like I said, he was drafted as a tackle, shifted into guard, was very good at guard, went to tackle last year, struggled a lot. So what are they going to do there? When they called his name, they, they said Connor Williams guard out of Texas. A lot of people are saying he fits as a guard as well. They'll work it out somehow. I just think it was a good pick. You know, the Cowboys are trying to get back to, you know, that best offensive line in the league. They had that nickname for a very long time. They had that, um, I don't know, stereotype, if you want to call it stereotype. They had that 
that phrase. Everybody, when you think of the Cowboys, you think of the best offensive line in football. They're trying to get back to that. Um, so I don't blame them in any way. Uh, they got to give some running lanes for Ezekiel Elliott. So I like the Connor Williams pick, gave it a B minus. Next in the third round with the 81st overall pick, the Cowboys select Michael Gallup, wide receiver out of Colorado State. Definitely the best wide receiver on the board. I think he's a very good wide receiver, very good route runner, um, very good with his hands as well. Um, I really don't have any knacks on the guy. You know, he's a, obviously there's going to be some things you don't like about him. I don't think he possesses any elite talent. He's not. He doesn't have elite speed. He doesn't have elite catching. Uh, doesn't have elite. I don't know. Uh, ball tracking. Whatever it is. Not very elite in anything. I just think. I think he could have been a second round pick. His quarterback. If you watch this film, his quarterback just. Uh, I mean, he can get behind a defense. I mean, if he's very good at anything, he's a very he's a tall receiver, decently tall, 6'1", 205. Uh, I believe he's 205, right? Yeah, 205. And he can get behind a defense fairly easily. Um, and he could also, you know, uh, catch those 50-50 balls. Do you trust him in those 50-50 balls where it's like 80-20, 75-25? No, you don't. But um, I think he's a he can get better at that. Uh, can remind you of a early Des Bryant. Can remind you. So don't take my word for it. He can remind you of one. Um, but you know he has some decent speed for a taller wide receiver. He can get behind a defense. His quarterback just always overthrew him. Always. Um, he had to come back for the ball a lot of times. So. Um, his quarterback was just bad, so um, his tape doesn't really show it, but I think he's a lot of, has a lot of potential. Is he a number one wide receiver? Probably not, but he's just going to be a role player in my opinion. So, moving on, Dorrance Armstrong, defensive end out of Kansas City, Kansas City, out of Kansas, uh, with the in the fourth round with the 116th overall pick. 6'4", 257, great pick, I gave it an A, you know, you gotta find yourself a pass rusher, I think you found a decent one late in this draft in the fourth round, like I said, the fourth round is where you're gonna find these, um, you know, borderline starter to role player type players, um, and I think Dorrance Armstrong is a very good pick here, you need a defensive end, you need a pass rusher, uh, you need somebody on that line, I think this was a great pick for the Cowboys, moving on, the uh, with the in the fourth round, 137th overall, the Cowboys select Dallas Schultz. Uh, Dallas, I keep calling him Dallas. Dalton Schultz, tight end out of Stanford. Um, he's another. I think I rated this a little higher, B plus. I would have given it a B minus, B plus. Now that Jason Witten is retired, you got clowns t talking about other clowns like Blake Jarwin being the potential starter for the Cowboys. Like he's the he's the best tight end right now that they have. That they really believe in him. This Blake Jarwin clown, and then this other guy, um, uh, Rico Gathers, that former basketball player who I actually liked last year. Um, you know, I don't. I think he was a little overhyped, but last year a lot of people were talking about him in the preseason. He did very well in the preseason, and maybe he's the guy at starter. But I don't think anybody's gonna fill in that role that Jason Wynn has has you know had for about what 13 seasons now. Great tight end, Hall of Fame tight end. They gotta find a way to replace him. Uh, Dalton Schultz is all right. I don't really. He doesn't possess anything elite. Again, he's just a guy. He's just a backup tight end. Really, that's what he really is. He's gonna be the guy that come up on third down and you know third and ten and stuff like that, where you've got you know um, two tight ends and like another uh, uh, two wide receivers, and he's gonna be that guy that runs the curl route and everybody forgets about him. He's gonna be the guy that just sticks to the sticks. And then everybody else is going to run their routes, and the quarterback is just going to dump it off to him, and that's how he's going to get yards. That's all I see in Dalton Schultz. I don't see much in him, but, you know, they drafted him. They're trying to get something going with the tight end position, and that's, I guess, to be applauded. So I gave it a B plus. Next, in the fifth round, seven, 171st overall, the Cowboys select... Mike White's quarterback out of Western Kentucky. I gave this a B plus. I like this pick. This is another guy who was a sleeper in the quarterback class that a lot of people were high on. He performed well in the, I believe, the Senior Bowl. He performed very well in, and a lot of people were, like I said, a lot of people were saying if they drafted him late, that maybe he could be a compete to, you know, maybe start sometime if a quarterback were, were to get injured, that um, he would be the guy there to fill in a role. And the Cowboys are preparing for anything to happen to Dak Prescott. They don't want, you know, the same situation that, that happened in what was it, 2015, where, or, or yeah, was it 20? No, it was 2014, I believe. 
no, 2015. 2015, where uh, Tony Romo gets injured, and you know the Dallas Cowboys go four and twelve, and everybody's you know going crazy. It's like the Dallas Cowboys are on fire, so uh, in a bad way, of course. So they don't want any of that to happen. So they drafted Mike White, get some depth there in the quarterback position, and you know they move on with their day there. Next. In the sixth round, 193rd overall, the Cowboys select Chris Covington, linebacker out of Indiana. I gave this a B. Like I said, you're going to double dip on the linebacker position. That's completely fine because you have a lot of picks to work with. The linebacker is definitely a position of need. Uh, he's a, he, I would say he's a strong side linebacker. He's definitely a pass rushing type linebacker. And um, yeah, they definitely need that. They need some kind of pass rush no matter where it is on that team defense in that front seven so I like the pick of Chris Covington so I gave it I gave it a B next here is a very questionable pick and probably the weirdest pick of them all we have Cedric Wilson wide receiver out of Boise State I like Cedric Wilson a lot can be a decent start not starting but a decent slot corner in this league and also a very good punt and kick returner but the thing is you, I believe you traded for Tavon Austin. You have Cole Beasley. Uh, you did trade away Ryan Switzer, who was very, very questionable. Made no sense because you got Tavon Austin, yes. But Ryan Switzer, to me, is a better wide receiver than uh, Tavon Austin will ever be. Ryan Switzer, to me, can be a very good slot receiver. Uh, probably better than Cole Beasley. But um, you know he was traded away to the Raiders. So you got three slot guys. They all are basically the same. I, I don't see any difference in them. I guess Cedric Wilson could be the faster one. I, I think Cedric Wilson is faster. Oh, no, Tavon Austin is very fast as well. You guys know that. But I don't know. I just don't see why you would draft a wide receiver that's another slot wide receiver. I would say you need another tall wide receiver, another possession wide receiver. You got Terrence Williams who... Terrence Williams is Terrence Williams, really. Uh, you got uh, that other guy. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. Um, I can't remember his name. Number 19. I believe his number is number 19. I forgot. But anyway. Um, and then you, that's pretty much it. And then you got Michael Gallup. But I think you just need another possession wide receiver. Who is available? I don't know. I think I know Equinemius St. Brown was drafted in the sixth round. I don't know if he was if he was um already taken when Cedric Wilson was taken but Equinemius St. Brown definitely could have been the pick for you instead of getting Chris Covington get Equinemius St. Brown I think that would have been a lot better to double dip at wide receiver you definitely need that after the departure of Des Bryant and it was already your wide receiver core was already in shambles so Moving on, and then Bo, Bo, Scarborough, Bo Scarborough was a fantastic pick. This is another power back. You guys love running power back, scheme, uh, power back plays. Um, you know, he was projected. I don't know what he was projected to be, Bo Scarborough, but I watched him a lot in, you know, w with Alabama. He was a really good back. Uh, not, you know, he was a poor man's Derrick Henry. That's what you want to say. He was a poor man's Der Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's a pretty damn good back, and uh, I would say he's a poor man Derrick Henry. So you could switch up that running game, you know, with Alfred Morris, Ezekiel Elliott, and mix in Bo Scarborough in there. And you got a very good triple threat there, three-headed monster there in Dallas. So you made that that running back uh, core even scarier in the seventh round with Bo Scarborough. We now move on to the Redskins. Oh, by the way, I give the draft grade overall for the Cowboys. I will give it a B, a solid B, very solid draft. Nothing spectacular again, but just a solid draft. We move on to the Washington Redskins in the first round with the with the twelfth, what was it, thirteenth overall pick. The Redskins select Don, uh, Deron Payne, defensive tackle out of Alabama. And at first, I rated this a C. It was a terrible pick in my opinion because I think they panicked after the Buccaneers selected Vita Vea and they didn't think they would draft Vita Vea, so they thought Vita Vea fell right into their hands and they would have drafted him. But you know, they selected Deron Payne, and I'm like. Hold on here. You have Matt and Ioannidis at defensive end. You have, you know, another Alabama defensive end you drafted in Jonathan Allen, who's a, a three, tech, like a three tech, five tech. I guess you, I don't know what you want to call him. Uh, he he can go anywhere, really. Jonathan Allen. I really like him. Uh, but unfortunately, him and Matt Ioannidis went down an injury, so obviously they got to get another uh, guy in that defensive line rotation. 
so it was very questionable for me i'm like okay is deron Payne gonna be your nose tackle because i know he played nose tackle in the college level but you know he's better as a pass rusher he is a pass rusher and if you guys watched him at alabama when he was playing nose tackle it was very hard for him to get a pass rush he's just i mean he's very strong don't get me wrong he can stop the run that's you know what he should be doing at nose tackle but he's not a nose tackle he is a three technique defensive tackle in pass rushing situations he's that pass rushing defensive tackle teams are starting to lean on here in the nfl um so deron Payne. Is he going to be your nose tackle? I thought that when they drafted him because, you know, I didn't think he fit anywhere else. But I guess they have another plan for him where they want to put him ahead of Matt Ioannidis and have a rotation going on with him uh, because they went in the third, no, in the fourth, no, in the fifth round. They got Tim Settle, defensive tackle out of Virginia Tech. And this guy can be a legitimate, in the fifth round, this guy could be a legitimate starter in the nfl his power is insane the way he gets past centers is insane i think he is the guy to be your nose tackle and deron Payne could fit into that three technique to be your your uh, pass rush three technique in the three four um, i think that defensive line automatically got scary if jonathan allen could stay healthy you already know what jonathan allen can do last year uh you know um first round pick last year also out of alabama washington loves these alabama guys and you know they're they're sticking with these Alabama guys and to me if it works then it works but they have to be mindful that that injuries are going to happen Deron Payne has problems with injuries Jonathan Allen has problems with injuries so you have to make sure you got some depth there but I like the pick it started to grow on me a little bit because I didn't like it because I thought they're going to stick in my nose tackle he's not a nose tackle he's he's 6'2 311 311 is a good three technique you know no no elite nose tackles in the league do you see at 311 you see them at 335 345 like damon harrison tim settle is 335 so he's a legitimate nose tackle that's what you want to see so we move on darius guys they stole him in the second round obviously he's going to be your starter right now i think it said rob kelly was a starter i don't know i like I, i've seen that in the depth charts on online but i don't know if that's true but darius guys darius guys is your guy um you do have other running backs there. You do have Chris Thompson there, who's like the best scat back in the league. You have uh, Samaj P. Ryan, who a lot of people thought maybe he was a future at running back. That didn't turn out after injuries and stuff like that. So Darius Guy should be your guy. Moving on, this was a very questionable pick to me in the third round where you're still fighting legitimate starting talent. Jerron Christian, who uh, offensive tackle out of Louisville. You already have probably one of the best duos in the nfl at tackle trent williams at left tackle you got uh morgan moses at right tackle so those are you know very good legitimate starters probably one of the best duos in the nfl right beside jason peters and lane johnson and then you got uh ty neski who's another one of the best swing tackles in the league who can start with any other team start he could start for the giants at right tackle um so you know, you got him there. Uh, people are saying that Ty Neski is going to the guard position. Maybe that's true, but even so, are you really going to go in the draft in the third round and draft a swing tackle in the third round? I just don't think that was a good option there. You definitely have a lot more needs, especially on the defense. Go get yourself another safety, which you did in this draft, granted. But go get yourself another safety. Go get, go get yourself another cornerback. Uh, very thin at corner, so you got to get somebody there. I don't know if that was a good pick for the Redskins there at offensive tackle. I, I didn't like it, so I gave it a C. Moving on, we got Troy Apke, uh, safety out of Penn State. I really like Troy Apke. What really elevated my highness on Troy Apke, he ran a 4-3, 440 at the combine that is an insane number for a safety who i mean he runs faster than odell beckham i mean he's going to be able to catch up to everybody and the fact is you're not going to be throwing him out at at, at uh, starting safety just yet you still got dj swearinger uh, De uh deshay everett is his name and then you got another guy there so he's going to be in the depth chart he's going to be your rotation safety he's going to start making plays in the passing game you know throw him on passing down on top of that he's not scared to hit people he's only 6 1 200 pounds but this guy can really hit people he can he knows how to tackle and he has definitely very good closing speed as you know from the 40 combine and takes very good angles in 
uh, in the run game when tackling players. So I really like Troy Aki, uh, the prospect of Troy Aki in the fourth round, 109th overall. So very good pick. I give it a B. Moving on. Yeah, I've already talked about Tim Settle. I gave that an A. Very good pick. Very good value there in the fifth round. In the sixth round, 197th overall, the uh, Redskins select Sean Dion Hamilton, linebacker out of Alabama. He's going to be another edge rusher for you. Get some edge rushing depth. Very good pick in the sixth round. I gave that an A. I'll give that a B-. Uh, in the seventh round, you got Greg Stroman, cornerback out of Virginia Tech. This is a guy that could potentially get a lot of playing time for you uh, with uh, not very much good corners there at Washington. Uh, this is a guy that I watched on tape that is pretty good, very good value in the seventh round and 241st overall. That's very far down there, but uh, I like the value there and he can potentially get a lot of playing time for you. So I gave that an A+. And then mystery relevant, does it really matter? Can you really give this a grade? Because you're not really taking him away from everybody, anybody. You're not drafting him ahead of anybody. This is the last pick in the draft. Uh, the Redskins select Trey Quinn, wide receiver out of Southern Miss. I gave it an A. I'll just give you a mulligan. I gave it an A. It doesn't really matter. They still need some guys at wide receiver, and they did not draft a wide receiver other than this guy Trey Quinn. So I guess you addressed it somehow. So I'm gonna get an, I'm gonna give it an A. Uh, so overall for the Redskins, I gave their draft a B. No, I'm gonna give yeah I'm gonna give it a B minus. I don't think it was spectacular like I said. Definitely the worst draft out of all these. Um, out of the Giants, Eagles, and Cowboys. Uh, I think they improved the least out of all the teams. But my favorite pick definitely has got to be either Darius Geis or Tim Settle. I really like those picks. Uh, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Who do you think had the best draft in the NFC East? Who do you think had the worst draft in the NFC East? Who do you think was the best uh, the best pick in the NFC East? Who do, you who do you think was the best pick of the value, uh, pick of need, best player available, whatever it is? And uh, yeah, with all that being said, uh, I, I don't know who I'm going to do next next time, whether it's going to be the AFC or NFC or East, West, North, South. I don't know who it's going to be, but um, if you guys have any suggestions, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.